As far as I understand, it came from uh, Kashmir itself, in the, uh, the Middle East. Presumably, you know, when, they, when the British had the campaign um, up there fighting Afghanistan, perhaps. They came over with an explorer who was out there, or, or the, the British army, and um, gifted to Queen Victoria. And then in the 1890s, she gifted a pair to Lord Mostyn of Clandidno, who was a general in the army then. Here in Clandidno, I am, I'm a professional wildlife and landscape artist. We ended up in Landudno. Um, we've been here for two years now, but we've been coming here for about 16 years as a family. I started painting when I was a child about, well, I've always drawn. I drew with pencils and pens from when I could, could hold a pen from the age of four or five or whatever. And then, um, discovered paint, um, oil paint it was, it got set off my parents when I was about eight or nine and just had a go with the oil paint and made a mess and I remember the painting as well, it was a, it was a, a great tit on, uh, on a, a canvas board, a nice muddy bird for my first attempt. Um, I've chosen to paint the goats really, it's, it's, it's to get them out of my system. As soon as I saw them I thought how, how iconic they are. Um, most people in the town love them um, and they are quite quirky uh, and entertaining even though some people don't like them, uh, the majority do. And it's good tourism for the town as well um, and it inspired me straight away for, for how photogenic they are and how they lend themselves to paintings as well. My process when I'm planning a new canvas is uh, normally get the reference material first, whether it's photography or sketches or a combination of both. Um, and then um, we plan out the layout of the picture, the composition, um, and then prime the canvas itself. This is depicting West Shore um, over the way there and it's a cliff, cliff face above Marine Drive and it's basically I took several photographs and I've patched them all three of them together to make this cliff so it's a little bit unique as well. Um, the two goats are from sketches, they're both males, they were sketched I think it was last autumn as the rut is about to start and these were kind of um, eyeing up each other at one point. Um, I've got some further sketches where they're actually fighting. The young males will challenge the older males and the rutting season starts with fights all on the slopes of the Great Hall. This is the month before where uh, the males are just kind of scampering around on the rocks up on the slopes, uh, posturing basically to each other in readiness for the, uh, the fights in the uh, rut. Yeah, this is one of the male billy goats, of the Kashmir goats found on the Great Hall. This particular guy is the, an alpha male, a really old, uh, high status male. Uh, chill, it likes to chill out at the, uh, at the convent down the road with the nuns. 
Uh, obviously got some specially nice bushes around there he likes to nibble and then they'll lie down in the sun and that's where I spotted this, this fella and uh, photographed him and sketched him. Yeah, the goats seem extremely well adapted to the Great Hall. Like a lot of mountain goats, really. Like they, all, they do remind me of the wild ibex in Europe, and in Spain I've seen them. And also Snowdonia, don't forget, Snowdonia has a population of wild goats down there. They're not Kashmiri, but they're still, you know, the wild goats with the large horns and look very similar. And I'd say Snowdonia is harsher weather than here. This is kind of a microclimate. So really, I mean, they do sun themselves in the morning on West Shore um, and also on the south facing slopes of the Great Hall. Um, but they tend to, I mean, withstand any winters up there anyway. Uh, the benefits of working here in this environment to me, I find, are it's the atmosphere is so, the whole town's so chilled basically, um, and the, the atmosphere to me is conducive to producing wildlife. I'm, I'm more, I'd say, more productive than I was living in the city before. Let me be your mind. Here we will be fine. The beats for this dream. Not too far from the heart. Uh, the other wildlife is, is there's, there's many really. There's, the uh, very rare chuff, red-billed chuffs are up there. There's about 15 have been told up there. Um, stone chats, even the rare merlin visits the top of the hall. Uh, there's a, a pair of peregrines nest up there, um, I, I believe on the cliffs facing the pier. Uh, Gilly moths, not, not so many of them. Uh, obviously, there's lots of cormorants you see in the, in the sea diving as well along the rocks. Blackback gulls. The greater blackback, the lesser blackback, and obviously the, the infamous herring gull that you know goes around mugging people for their ice creams and sausage rolls and chips. Um, I do quite a bit of conservation work if we can get involved with it for charities and various good causes. Um, Raptor Aid is the one of the main ones um, where I'll, I'll donate a painting, we'll raise funds for that, and the money goes towards helping, you know, dif distant causes like in the Philippines for the Philippine Eagle, for instance, as well as local causes, building owl boxes, bird boxes, nest boxes, um, whatever. Uh, we can apply it to really.